I will call this meeting to order. I will just this meeting is being recorded. No, <laughs> now I will call the meeting to order on October 24, 1st, 2020 at 5.45 p.m. The Town of Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health will hold a meeting um, here in the municipal offices. Meetings normally held in the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Governor's um, March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099 and toll-free at 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 620-007-8930. And the passcode is 01373. Thank you and, and welcome. Um, we have, uh, we initially scheduled uh, some wastewater treatment upgrade um, discussion, but we're gonna have that on November 4th, so we have yep. plenty of time because we do want to try to meet, uh, make this planning board meeting. Um, is Chris Curtis on? He's not here yet. Yeah. Okay, so we have any select board announcements? Dave, do you have anything? No, just early voting is, is started. Please come and fill out your ballot. Um, you know, Barb and her team are doing a great job getting people in. Um, you know, it's very simple, very easy. So if you want to come in and early vote, you're welcome to do that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Um, special um, town meeting with yes. Oh, special town meetings tomorrow. We'll talk about that oh, in a few minutes. But yeah, yes. we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But yes. Yes. yes, good point, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Oh my <laughs> God. In. Five o'clock tomorrow. That's a very unusual time. Mm -hmm. Five o'clock tomorrow at the Frontier Football Field. Yeah. And the reason why it's five o'clock is because we need to do it before it gets too dark. Yep. Um, Board of Health announcements. Um, any updates? Any revisions on our opening plan? I guess um, I just want to talk about Halloween for a minute. Yes. Um, we really want to keep the schools open and we want to keep the kids safe. So anybody that is doing trick-or-treating, please, please supervise your kids really well. Make sure they have a mask on under their costume. Make sure um, that they're socially distancing as much as possible. And anyone yeah. that has is handing out candy, Make sure it's not a communal bowl. Make sure you have some way to deliver the candy that's separate and okay for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, really, really important. And it, yeah, if you don't feel comfortable bringing your children out, please, by all means, stay home. It, 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 it will help uh, us keep the schools open and businesses open and you know, slow the spread. So if you don't feel comfortable having your children out, you know, next year we, we hope we can go back to the way it was. Um, if you don't feel comfortable having kids come to the house, turn your light off. You know, there's no, no shame in not having, having kids come to your door this year at all. You, you're doing a good thing by, again, slowing the spread. Um, if you do feel like you want to participate, and it, it is a fun time every year, um, please be safe. We really need to keep the schools opening. We're seeing upticks around the, the county and obviously around the country and the state. Uh, the country is in a world of hurt right now uh, because of... You know, people are not wearing masks and are not social distancing and they're gathering in large groups and even locally we're having, you know, parties with young, you know, teenagers and 20 year olds, um, you know, not paying attention and, and they're, they're causing massive havoc and, and a ton of work for our, uh, for our public health nurses uh, and everybody to contact trace that and make sure they're quarantined and, you know, it, it's, it's really tough when work. all you have to do is wear one of these. Really simple and distance and wash your hands it's it's not rocket science and we can beat this thing but we're going in the wrong direction right now so anything you can do while you're taking your kids out you know if you see a bunch of kids up at the doorstep just wait a minute let them go on and then send one at a time up 
And, and if you're passing out stuff, find an ingenious way to hang stuff on a clothesline or spread it out in bags so the kids can just come up and grab it. Um, they all don't have to huddle around. So wear your mask, you know, be safe, and, um, and have a good time. That's all. Yeah. Uh, we just really want everyone to be safe. It's, um, the uptick is really, it's, it's really horrendous. And mm -hmm. it's mostly from, I, I understand people are getting tired and yeah. it's now, it's, it's spreading between people having parties and dinner parties and, um, you know, it, it is, it's, it's hard. So please just, what worked in 1918 can work in 2020. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cheap, it's mass, and it's social distancing and it's washing your hands. And what works to, to contain COVID also contains the regular flu. Mm -hmm. So get your flu shot so there's no con confusion with the flu and COVID-19. And um, just continue to be safe and practice good hygiene, social distancing, and wearing a mask. And you won't get the flu either. So hopefully we can keep everybody safe. Is there anything you want to add, David? No, it's uh -huh. just, you know, obviously there's, with the colder weather coming and everything, it's just the chances of exposure are increasing because you're more activities inside. Mm -hmm. and it's just doing the due diligence that, you know, fortunately, most of us have been doing. Uh, there's been a few parties that kind of put things into a tailspin, but, you know, hopefully we've got a little bit of that out of our blood. But, you know, people are just also unfortunately kind of fed up with this and they kind of go through that slight period when they say the heck with it but you know we've got to be careful with that the heck with it stage yeah we really do and uh, so just protect ourselves protect our families and it's um, really it's it's not worth yeah. the awfulness of getting sick yeah. um i see that chris is here chris how are you Chris is muted. You're muted. You need to unmute. Yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm not muted. Thank you. Um, you know, thank you for coming tonight. There was a little confusion at the um, finance committee meeting about the floodplain zoning. So I was hoping to, you could just give us a little bit of the floodplain zoning. I know it's the same map. But I think it's very important that you say it's the same map and how we're updating it and why we're updating it. Right. Um, you know, I was talking to the planning board chairman about this just a few minutes ago. One, one of the most important things about the floodplain zoning is that your zoning bylaw has to meet um, specific standards to continue to qualify for the National Flood Insurance Program. And your current bylaw does not meet those standards. Um, so that's one of the most important reasons for um, making these changes. Uh, and then obviously, uh, with the work that we're doing under the National Vulnerability Preparedness work, um, this is one of the primary goals for the town to try to do a better job of protecting the, the floodplain area. So I think we have some good and reasonable standards established um, and it is true that the map doesn't change um, we're just using the existing floodplain maps that are currently adopted okay well, that's helpful. Yep. I, I, I think it's very not not controversial at all but I think there was some um, concern from the Finance Committee that uh, there was going to be a constraint on development but the price of developing in the flood plain and, and doing recovery after the floods are so expensive that it doesn't make sense. It's not the right place to develop. And most of our floodplain is in um, uh, APR land restriction, conservation restriction anyway. Can you, um, can I ask a quick question? Can sure. you hear us okay? Chris, can you hear us okay? Casey? Uh, it's very, very faint on my end. Yeah, I, you know, Jonathan, we don't have mics out here today, and that might be because they're not going through the regular system. I got a text from somebody turning on today, and they could not hear us at all. Very unintelligible. And um, I just want to apologize. Normally, we have mics on the table, and they go through, and it gets 
broadcast out, but we're just getting videotaped from one thing and we're on Zoom. Um, so we'll try to speak louder, I guess, and, and uh, try to be a little more clear when we talk. A phone underneath the uh, petition, so the speaker on the side will pick up. Oh, what's that? Put, oh, sorry. Put this one here underneath? Not the one with the keyboard, the one without the keyboard. Yeah, this doesn't have a keyboard. Just put it under there. It should be. Oh, okay. Yeah, sound. that might work a little better. Okay. okay. Because Good. you were getting muffled through the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably through the plexiglass yeah. glass as well. Okay. That changed things quite a bit. Okay, good. That's great. That's great. Okay. Um, well, so anyway, Chris, thank you very much. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add on to that? It's the same map, so people need to understand, it's the same map that already exists. The floodplain map is the same floodplain map. We're updating the bylaw to meet the national uh, national flood insurance requirements so people can get flood insurance. That's right. There's actually subsidized uh, insurance available, um, which is um, gonna cost a lot more if we get knocked out of the flood insurance program. It actually affects the houses on Stillwater and some on five and 10, I believe. That's about it. But um, well, I think along the Connecticut River, along um, River Road, uh, would be an example of an area. Certainly, oh. all. Of them. So, um, so the the floodplain um, does encompass some houses on River Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't have the map right in front of me right now. Um, Okay, I didn't. I wasn't aware that they um, had too many houses that were in the floodplain. Chris, can I ask a question? Katie. Yes. Um, so this case meets the national flood insurance program requirements to continue to qualify for reduced flood insurance rates. That's correct. Okay. And what was the other, there was another item um, well, that you mentioned right at the top of the discussion. The, it wasn't the map, it was something else. I'm actually writing notes for the handout. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that was. Okay, <laughs> we'll just go with what we got. <laughs> how, many, how many houses does it pick up along River Road, Trevor? Uh, I was just going to try and save this uh, and uh, share it. Um, can you, Chris, can you look at your map and find out how many houses are actually affected along River Road? Because most of that land is along there is APR and it's high enough up on the riverbank, I think. It's not... Yeah, I'm just trying to look at it now. It does affect some people, there's no question, who have, whoever has flood insurance now is, is affected by this. I mean, they would want to come and update so they could continue to get subsidized insurance, otherwise you'd have to pay even more. Yeah, it kind of looks to me like uh, there's a handful of houses along River Road that are on the river side that are probably in the floodplain, or yeah. at least partially. Yeah, there's not that um, many. There's not that many, but the, not, I didn't, but you're right. Many. It doesn't matter, it's a few. And there's a few on Stillwater and um, a few in um, five and, along 5 and 10, I believe. So it, yeah. it's a few so, dozen. That's the, um, yeah, I think that's basically right. That's the map there. Um, so for, for, for the majority of people, it's a tremendous, it, will, it has tremendous impact that will save them money. So we need to do this. Otherwise, the, the flood insurance is, I mean, it's expensive already, but it will be more expensive. Right. How, who, who do we notify, Chris, once we pass this? 
How does um, the National Flood Insurance Program know that we've updated our, and that we are current? Well, I was going to touch with um, managers are at the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, MEPA, yeah. and uh, things like this. So I've been in touch with them. I've sent them a copy of the draft bylaw, and um, I'll, I'll certainly continue to follow up on that. Okay. Once it's Thank you, Chris. Sure. Dave, did you have any questions or anything? No, it's just um, I know that's existing and there's a change in the format, but you know. Um, so basically, there's no floodplain in like the center of South Deerfield, that area. Correct. No, no. that's. Yeah. There's just a little bit along this area here, which is way over off the South Mill River. Yeah. Really kind of in the back. Yeah, and then we go into the Great Swamp. Yeah, the Great Swamp there. Kind of in the town here a little bit, you know, by Frontier and uh, it's Bloody Brook, really, is what we're looking at there. Yeah, because. Because that all floods, you know. Not that there's many around that know this, but you know, there are pictures of rowboats going down North Main Street in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Turn of That's amazing. Because I mean, it's, it's so Well, high. 38 was everywhere. Yeah. The whole valley was flooded in 38. Yeah. But that's a lot higher elevation than that river. It's oh, yeah. Amazing. But it's because of the, uh, the, br the bloody brook and stuff. The bloody brook itself. The bloody, yeah. bloody brook can't process that much water. Yeah. It backs okay. up already. Yeah. But that's why we're trying to clean it out. <clears throat> All right. So yeah. your, your existing current bylaw really doesn't have any standards for the floodplain? Yeah. <laughs> And the only regulations that exist right now are for the floodway, which is actually the really the brook itself or the or the river itself, um, the area that is the most um, intensely uh, flooded. But the floodplain itself, the town doesn't have any regulations in place right now, so it's not obviously a problem, um, something that really needs to be addressed. Okay, uh, Chris, with the establishment of the floodplains and clearing of the bylaws, with the transfer of properties in a, a parcel in a floodplain, does that, re will the bank require you to have flood insurance? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think if, you're, if your home is located or a building is located in the floodplain itself, yes, I think the bank probably would. Okay. They do now. If you go to if you go to get a mortgage, and you're in the floodplain, you have to have flood insurance. Yeah. And and that's why um, this would have significant impact. I mean, I, I the national ins flood insurance program probably just does not aware that we don't have up to date regulations because they would they would not be eligible for subsidized insurance right now. Mm. So. I just want to make sure that they're aware that we have updated our insurance so no one gets a big bill at some point. Right. Uh, whoever the people are that do have the homes. Okay. Well, if there's no more questions, thank you, Chris. I, yeah. hope, I hope you don't mind coming and standing up at town meeting to just explain the flood insurance, the reason for doing this for flood insurance. Yeah, I'm planning to be there, and um, I'll be there to answer any questions that come up on Bible. And okay. you'll, you'll be around at 7 tonight for the Planning Board public hearing? I will. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Are, are we still doing the, uh, the two plans tonight? Two plans? The land conservation and flood plan? Yes. Evacuation plan? I don't have a plan to show them. I didn't. I wasn't able to find anything, Chris. Oh, oh. Sure I Oh, I have dropped off my copy of the town hall for distribution and. Um, when did you drop them off? When did I drop them off? Oh, wait a minute. Your <laughs> hard copy. That's why. Hold that thought. This is the MVP plan. Huh? You you just want us well, you just want the select board to adopt it, right, Chris? 
Yes, there, there's two plans that are on the agenda tonight. One is the flood evacuation plan that we prepared uh, with in, in historic Deerfield. And the second one is the land conservation plan for the Deerfield River. Both of those were funded under our grant and completed um, recently. And it's important that um, the town take action um, to adopt them. Um, I'm send them to me electronically next time, Chris. <laughs> um, I got them. Chris, I, um, you know, obviously I support them because um, I was on the committee. You know, the core core committee to do this. So, um, but this is a lot of information to take in. So, unfortunately, I think Dave and Trevor need to read that. Um, so we need to put this on the agenda for the fourth. Is that going to be a problem, Chris? Um, no. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do a presentation to, uh, to summarize some of the key findings of the plans, and then you could read them over. Okay. Um, Great. Oh, I think that would be good. That. that would be good, Chris. Is that okay? okay. Yeah. Is that okay, Dave, with you? Okay. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead, then? Great. Um, I'll just spend a few minutes summarizing uh, each of the plans, and I'll, I'll start with the flood evacuation plan. Okay. The goal of this plan was to prepare the town, and particularly um, Old Deerfield, for the well, the catastrophic failure of one of the dams in the Deerfield River system, which would uh, trigger um, pretty um, intense flooding in that area and also downstream or um, the possibility of a hurricane at reading type of event in the future. So we wanted to have a plan that was um, ready and, and on the books to um, evacuate people from effect. And we wanted to coordinate that with um, all of the private schools and organizations of the airfield. So we convened a, uh, a flood evacuation committee made up of uh, the heads of schools or the emergency management people. And uh, we met several times in the process of putting this plan together with that group and uh, extremely helpful and participatory in the whole. So the plan describes um, some of the types of things that happen if there were a catastrophic dam failure. For example, if the Harriman uh, failed on the Deerfield River, the flood from the dam would arrive in Old Deerfield um, initially in three hours and would peak in about six hours. So in a very, very short amount of time, um, the flood levels in, in Deerfield, uh, historic Deerfield itself would, would be from 16 feet to 42 feet deep, depending on where you are in that area. So it's, uh, it's obvious that we would have to go out of there quickly and we would have to uh, a really well coordinated um, game plan for that. The Somerset Dam, which is further north in Vermont, failed. The flood gets there in um, eight hours, and it's even deeper, it's 20 to 49 feet, depending on the uh, location you are in. And then if you look at the Connecticut River, uh, the Mulch Dam, for example, on the Connecticut River, Vermont, if that dam failed, the floodwaters would get to uh, South Deerfield in 13 hours, and it would be about five feet deep at the Ward Avenue neighborhood down um, near the bridge. So that um, is also uh, an area of concern. So the plan has some fairly detailed flood and inundation maps, <coughs> excuse me, inundation maps that were taken from the, um, the Great Hydro <coughs> Study and just to give people a sense of the extent of where those floodwaters would be, we did a, a kind of a close look at what kind of affected populations and infrastructure would be impacted by a flood of this type. And for example, in um, historic Deerfield, depending on the time of year, there are between 1,500 and 2,600 people just in the, in the schools and the organizations there that would have to be evacuated in that short amount of time. Um, and that doesn't even count the residents um, of the area. 
a lot of people need to be moved quickly. So the, the plan really um, focuses on uh, two things, the, the notification procedures for, for getting the word out to people, and we focused on the rate alert system and getting more sign-ups for that, and then using the, uh, the tabletop exercise that the town participating in to improve our list of uh, contacts that get, that get made and, and assist for that. And then uh, it also focuses on evacuation routes. And what the committee decided and, and, and prioritized was that the primary evacuation method would be on foot, um, and it would be to move the population and the students up to the Eagle Brook campus, which is above of the, uh, the area that gets uh, reason for an, an, an evacuate, evacuation on that it just takes long to get um, buses there, and there's concern that, you know, there'd be jams and problems um, if people try to do it by car. So out and moving them by foot is probably the fastest and, and best way to do that. Tell us about each of those kinds of things, and um, we have passed this plan along to all of the, the schools and, and organizations like Historic Deerfield, and they viewed it and um, and given their comments and approval um, to the to the plan. So it's um, it's now. Um, the next step is to have the town formally adopt the plan, which kind of puts the official, you know, seal of the law on it. And uh, the two uh, to all of these groups um, as a finished finished document. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there just to see if there's any questions. It's not a question, Chris. I was just going to tell them that I had gone to Homeland Security and gotten another grant. We had additionally done a table pot a couple years ago, um, but I got additional funding to do another table pot, and we were actually going to practice this plan this spring, but because of COVID, um, it was canceled. Uh, well, it wasn't canceled per se, the money is still there, so it was postponed until we can, again, do this in person, and we were going to practice the notification from Gray Hydro, because you only have those three hours. And then the actual, um, you know, um, response of like the schools because there's only a three-hour window um, if one of the dams goes, uh, like the Harriman. So we we needed to make sure people responded. So we were actually going to practice this plan, um, but we're going to go ahead and approve it. And then when we practice it, we'll make some adjustments if we need to. And then, that's one of the recommendations in the plan is to have um, some exercises that in practice the evacuation itself as well. I think it's 32,000 or something like that is what was set aside to do the actual practice of, you know, we're gonna actually, it's a countywide drill, but it's focused on our plan, so. Hopefully we can do it next spring, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions about that one before I move on to the second one? No. That's pretty good. Who did the calculations for the depth of the water? That was um, That was by a consultant for uh, Gray Hydro. Um, I forgot the name of the consultant right off the top of my head, but uh, Boston-based firm, engineering company. They um, they did it, Dave. Uh, it's a requirement of the federal government when they file their paperwork. They have to do an inundation plan, and it's taken from their inundation plan. Um, and that's where we were concerned about um, Beaver Drive and Ward Avenue and. You know, um, because those so areas didn't flood during 38. They didn't, they didn't flood? No. With, um, it all dumped into Sunderland. Yeah, right. well, that's Sunderland's going to get wiped out. Sunderland will get wiped out because yeah, the more that whole area is low. There's no Sunderland. Low. But, but this, so side, no this, side of, this side of the river was pretty well protected. 
No, no water came up. No, and the only reason we lost the bridge there was because of one of the bridges up north that came down through and hit it and wiped it out. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's you not get down in the Hadley in that area, and it was, it was very bad. Yeah. Yeah. And Holyoke. Yeah. Okay. But we were pretty well protected. My facts, you know, my family told me the stories of people just sitting there on the side of the road watching. in that area, watching the water come down and taking the bridge out. Wow. Um, that was well, a source of entertainment because they didn't have TVs. Oh, well, yeah. Um, they watch. have to file, these inundation maps were um, developed, and they have to file them with the federal government as part of their licensing. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's their estimate. Yeah, so. it's better to be overly cautious, but you know, but it's just you know. Well, that's good to know. I mean, if I if that was my neighborhood, I would want to know yeah. how, um, what the potential was. So that's really good information. Mm -hmm. I, I still think we should practice as if it was going to flood, though. Yeah. But oh, that's good. Okay. Okay, moving on. Okay, so the um, second plan is the Deerfield River Land Conservation, and actually I'm connected to the first plan um, in, in uh, many ways. As, uh, as Kevin would like to say, Deerfield's at the bottom of the bowl in the Deerfield River watershed, um, so we catch um, most of the floodwater down here, and the um, primary goal of this plan is to make sure that we are protecting our villages and the downstream cities from um, further damage. It get even worse if there was um, development in the floodplain um, that would, you know, use up some of that available storage that's there. Uh, so this plan, you know, also looked at the, the existing protection. It looks like there's about 500 of the floodplain that's currently under APR, um, but there are 1,300 acres that are vulnerable at this point um, and not protected under APR. So the approach that we took here was to really um, do a detailed mapping of the entire floodplain area, um, and then we uh, up with a scheme to prioritize and that would be the most important for the town to protect from, from and purposes. So we looked at in this prioritization were uh, your flood plain maps uh, prepared by FEMA, also the flood way, which again is mostly the course of the river itself, uh, and the flood storage capacity of, of the flood plain itself. Then we looked at uh, land parcels and ownership, wildlife habitat, wetlands, uh, whether the farmland was active, viable farmland or not, the threat of development to um, an individual parcel. And we took, um, for each parcel of land, um, we have all the criteria and gave it a score. We built the point scoring system. And there were 154 parcels altogether that we looked at that were unprotected. We, we ranked those kind of from from very high to medium and low. So um, in the final ranking system, there were 26 that ranked very high and uh, 36 that were high priority. Once that has been done and identified, we also looked at um, land protection measures that could be used to try to um, protect some of these high priority parcels. And the plan lists things like uh, the Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program, uh, Constitution Restrictions, Chapter 6 A, Purchase of Land by Land Trust, uh, using uh, Community Preservation Act funds, or uh, utilizing the NRCS as a program called the Agricultural Conservation Easement Program. Uh, all of those are options that would be helpful to achieve some of the goals of the plan. And then we also looked at funding mechanisms, um, which were, you know, in those programs are funding mechanisms as well. Uh, but in addition, um, trying to get assistance from uh, land trusts uh, or different USDA programs or, or some that are described in more detail in, in the plan. 
So the plan has a series of recommendations that's at the end. And just to kind of run through a couple of those quickly, the plan recommends holding a town-wide land protection workshop for landowners in the floodplain. Recommends reaching out to landowners of those particularly high priority parcels to determine their willingness to have land protection and engage in that. Seeking MVP funds to enable a package of land protection steps. Assisting landowners with required application paperwork. Working in concert with the Franklin Land Trust to create a matching fund pool. And then there's some more specific recommendations for organizations or landowners. So those are kind of the general themes of the plan. And again, maybe I'll stop there and see if anybody has any questions. A lot of work here. Great work. Thank you. Yeah. All the different parcels. Yeah. No. Thank you, Chris. This is very complete. Yep. Really appreciate it. Well, I think it's important because this is supposed by the MVP program that the town takes some sort of final action on them. I understand you can't do that tonight, but I'm just saying that's the rationale behind bringing them to you. When you make the report to the MVP program, we'll have to put in some kind of statement about the tabletop being postponed because of COVID or something. Because that was, I mean, we wanted to show that we were following up on it. Yeah. Is that still going to happen by Zoom or something in the spring? No. We're hoping that we can be able to get together enough and do it in an open, big open building. Somewhere. Because we want people to be able to get together and then be able to practice it. So, I don't know. It might be late spring or early summer. It's 2019 money, so that money has to be spent by December of 2021. So, it will be, it has to happen. Or, you know, we have to use that money for something else and then use it 2020 money that gets to go until 2022. So, I don't know. I mean, it's just on hold. Nobody, you know, the money is set aside. We talked about it Tuesday at the Homeland Security meeting again. And, you know, I told them it was very, very important that we practice this. And, you know, that I didn't want to save the money. And everyone agreed that it was important. And then they, so we set it aside, continued to set it aside. So, we'll see where we are at in a few months. But I could get you meeting minutes or something like that so that there's some indication that there is the follow-up of a partner. You know, the Homeland Security was supposed to be our partner. Love you or something. Okay. Sure. That sounds good. All right. Do you want to take it at your next meeting? Yes, November 4th. Okay. Can you put it on the agenda, Casey? We'll just, if there's anybody. I'll do that. Chris, if there's, if Trevor or Dave have any questions, I'll just have them directed to Casey to give to you. And then we'll just, you don't have to come. We'll just vote on it. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. And that will be. When's the quarterly reports due? Is it that misses the quarterly reports? Um, well, we have monthly reports and uh, on the last day of each month. 
So we'll just report on it for November. That's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chris. I wonder if, I don't know if you have any extra time, but I had a couple of quick updates on. Sure. If you have a minute. Sure. Sure. Okay. We had a meeting this morning regarding the green infrastructure projects that are about to start construction, or some of them are actually have been under construction in town with the contractor and Kevin Scarborough were there. And I think we resolved some issues. The rain gardens at the elementary school that got installed a couple of weeks ago have been having some erosion problems with the storms that we've had. So the contract recommended some changes and improvements to those, and Kevin agreed that those would make sense and approved those. And then we also took a look at the four tree box filter locations that are due to start construction next week in the town center. These are stormwater tree box filters. And one of the locations, which is directly in front of the spirit shop, had some problems with a gas line being in the way. So the best option was to move that one. Kevin suggested that the alternative location should be on Conway Street near the senior center, or actually on the senior center property, which actually is a site that we already had in mind for the sort of second round of tree box filters. So, you know, that makes sense. And the contractor was willing to make that change, and so it seems like everybody was on board with that. And it sounds like we'll be able to go forward with all of this work beginning on Monday. So Monday at the elementary school and Tuesday for the work in the town center for the tree box filter installation. So that was one update. And then secondly, I just wanted to, again, thank you for writing the letter of support for the Deerfield River Wild and Scenic designation. And I wanted to tell you that I've now met with a couple of other towns, notably Shelburne and Savoy, and they've also signed on to this initiative and probably do about two communities per week going forward. So you started a very positive trend. Great. Yeah, thank you, Chris, for that work. That's great. There's some momentum there. Okay. Yeah, no, that's exciting. Yeah. So thank you. That's my update. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you have my only question on Tuesday? Let's see. Okay. You're starting next Tuesday, right? That's not election day, right? No. No, we still have another week. Okay, we still have another week. Perfect. Just making sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. We're going to... Great. Keep going. We have a half hour to go here. All right. Thanks, Okay. Next item on the agenda is town meeting motions. We were going to table the general stabilization based on the finance committee meeting. And then, you know, I've been going over this with, and Trevor has gone over this. I think we should dump the consent agenda and just approach everything individually, Dave. I mean, I know they can't be, I don't want to mess up all of Casey's work, but she's got her hand up. You want to just talk for a while? Lisa and Dan have talked this through. Okay, go ahead. There is a method. This is not very different from how we handle the warrant article for community preservation funds. Okay? So, you itemize what you're doing, and you treat, the funding piece itself is treated as a separate um, vote, but you can present it as a single article, which you've done. If people have a question, Dan can then call it out, and we can do a, we can handle it separately. Um, 
Trevor asked me a question before the meeting about how you convey the the individual numbers in each subsection. And I don't have an answer, but I'm pretty sure that Dan and Lisa have already talked about it, so I'm gonna get to this tomorrow. Yeah, I was thinking the, the motion is in the handout with all of these numbers because there's recommendations for each one. In other words, if you recall, finance committee didn't do a recommendation on the whole motion. Right. Or the whole article. Okay, they did separate things. My, so my question for the select board is um, subsection by subsection. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, do you agree with those? And do you want me to put your recommendation into the motion? So, but let's back up a uh, let's back up a check because you guys need to vote. I would guess you guys need to just formally. Um, decide whether you want those numbers in there. So I just, I'm okay with the content of it and I'm okay saying this is a article three, which is a consent article. And that I move that we act on, you know, on article three for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020 with each item considered a separate appropriation as presented in this handout. But then I would like to have a discussion and say, I'm gonna present section A and have that discussion and then present, you know, and, and, and listen to people's questions and vote on each one individually. Because I think people are gonna be all over the place and massively confused if we try to vote one vote for all of these individual items, especially when we get to the compensation plan uh, or the schedule. But that's the purview of the moderator, Trevor. Yeah, fine, but I'll... I'll Cancel that town meeting is the purview of the moderator. And so we have already talked to them about how we can handle that. And as happens with the community preservation article, most of the time they don't even know what's going to be presented at annual town meeting. This past annual town meeting was the first time we even presented what the projects were in the warrant. So each one of those things had a separate discussion, if you recall. Yeah, as long as we can take each one, one at a time, and discuss them, because we can't really pass one vote for the whole thing. It's just too... You yeah. could, if nobody has any questions. But yep. you're right. That's you never going to happen. Yeah. So I, that's why I keep saying, think of this as a community preservation motion, because it's very similar. That is a consent article, but it's not called a consent article. Right. Because there's different elements in that article for funding that get addressed every year. I just think next time let's just do one. I mean, the community preservation items. article. In, in that annual town meeting warrant, you address different items every year because the applications are different every year. Right. So the motion itself contains separate pieces of information. Yeah. In a very similar manner. They just don't call it a consent article. I know, it's just confusing for the average person to understand that. I just want to make sure it's clear what we're doing. And they get like, hey, this is one giant article with all kinds of unrelated items other than that they all have money attached to them. And then we can just talk about, hey, we have you know, a capital expenditures, we've got two trucks. We've got a truck and, a, and some mobile data units. Okay, let's move on to general stabilization. We're not interested in putting money in general stabilization. We're going to table that one. So that's my question. You guys need to vote that motion. Yeah, I'm going to do that, because but I just want to talk. It was the finance committee. I... You did not have a posted meeting. So it was good that everybody got a chance to listen to how the finance committee yes. was digesting. And they did exactly what you're talking about. They digested it subsection by subsection. Right. But you weren't able to take a formal motion, I get a that. formal motion on these. So I need you to identify whether you want to make changes in any of these subsections. I can do I that. Can. I can do that. I just, I just um, wanted to, we will do that. I just wanted to just make sure it was clear to people how we're going about this because it, it is a lot in one article. So yes, I, I, will, I will start with A. So yes, I, I would make a motion to, to approve from the select board the expenditure from free cash for $35,000 for the police mobile data terminals for the cruisers 
and 35, 000, uh, 32,500 from free cash to fund the F-150 pickup truck. Those total items for subsection A is $67,500. These were items that we, for the general public, these were items that we had on the annual town meeting that we put on hold because we didn't know the financial position of the town. We hadn't had free cash certified yet. We think we're in a pretty good position right now to appropriate those so, items. So, Casey, you want us to re-vote all of these? We already voted this. You didn't vote them. You never voted motion. Oh. That's why. So, oh. so, okay. so you just do I have it? Just, just and you just want to take it back yeah. to this meeting and just make your confirmation because generally so, there wasn't a lot of dis there wasn't a lot of um, distance between. What I heard individual comments on. So, okay. so do we have a second? I crafted second. these motions based on what I heard. I, I, so I, I Carolyn, second. Any further discussion? I are, are you all set, Dave? Yeah. Okay. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. And then the second one is uh, B, which is to transfer. Um, to FY21 general stabilization. I, I agree, I think, with the Finance Committee and as, you know, I've thought about this. Um, I kind of wanted to put some money aside, but um, uh, I understand with the year the way it is, it might be safer to have it um, a little bit more uh, accessible and free cash, not knowing how the year's gonna pan out. Um, and we already do have, you know, a considerable amount of money in stabilization. Uh, general stabilization, 1.6 million. So I think that's that's good for a rainy day, um, and it's been pouring lately. So um, and it may rain harder later. So I'm okay. So I would make a motion to to table uh, section B, subsection B of Article Three. I, Carolyn, would also second that. Is there any further discussion? Did Dave? No. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Walker. Aye, Carolyn Ness. And now for subsection C, which is to transfer to the FY21 uh, capital stabilization account, and this is capital money that we put aside for projects we have coming forward. I think uh, it does make sense to put the 250, uh, 250,000 into capital stabilization. We do have, you know, we do have a lot of needs coming forward and a lot of capital projects coming forward. And yes, I understand it's more money. It's more difficult to pull money out of stabilization accounts. You need two thirds town vote, but that's kind of the whole purpose is that we want to have um, slow, decision -making. slow decision making and we want to spend it on, you know, on capital items. And we do, you know, the highway department has something every year they need The you know, we have all these different projects in town. So it's important to put money in there. Um, I don't have a total on the number right now that it's in. I think it's like 600,000. Yeah, is it six? Capital stabilization is, is I want to say six. 600, maybe 650,000. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it's in that range. Um, so so this would add to that. And I think it, I think it makes sense. I think we do have the money uh, to do that right now. Our free cash is about, well, before all of this was about one three. You know, it will drop some with the different articles that we're doing tonight, but I think I think we'd be okay to do that. I, you know, I do too. So I'll make that motion. And if we have a project that you know we can vote that at an annual town meeting when it comes up, so so I'd make a motion to to um to move the transfer from free cash uh two hundred fifty thousand in the capital stabilization account. I'll second it then. And is there any more discussion? Yeah. I, okay. I'm very I'll move in favor. Okay. I, Trevor McDaniel. I did welcome. I Carolyn Ness. Okay. That one. Um, so this is the trans uh, subsection D to transfer uh, for the Deerfield 350 of celebration funds. Again, this is ten thousand dollars that we've been putting in, or we have started second. in the last few years. This is the second, second installment. Yeah. We have ten thousand in the account right now, and what we're doing is putting ten thousand away each year until our celebration, so we don't have to come up with all this money all at once. And uh, we had just pulled it off of, again, off the annual town meeting earlier in the spring because we, we just weren't sure where we were at and uh, we were trying to shorten that, that warrant article. So I, I think it makes sense to do this and I would make a motion to 
transfer from free cash ten thousand dollars to put into the town's 350th anniversary celebration i'll second that um i just want to add that um we have an initial budget of about a hundred thousand dollars for the 350th celebration and um the fundraising committee intends to raise money through you know different events and you know have products and stuff you know like t-shirts and stuff yeah. like that for people to buy and um, so they anticipate at least raising sixty thousand dollars or more. So, whatever money that uh, town money, we would use the fundraised money first. Mm -hmm. And this is just seed money. Um, you know, like if we need to make a deposit on uh, fireworks, say, or some mm -hmm. something like that. Um, this would be used, you know, last and only if necessary um, when the fundraising falls a little short. But you know, um, we have a great fundraising committee, and I anticipate us having a wonderful celebration, and um, hopefully we will not have to spend all that much of town money, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and by the way, anyone that is interested in any having any kind of event or participating in any kind of events, please um, feel free to contact the Selectman's Office to volunteer for the committee. Yeah. Our next meeting is next Monday at 6 p.m., by the way. Um, so, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, David Wolfman. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. So, uh, Section E is the transfer uh, for the FY 2020 legal expenses. Um, so, this is to see if the town will vote to transfer from available funds or otherwise provide FY uh, provide uh, twenty five thousand uh, for unforeseen legal expenses for the fiscal year beginning July first, twenty twenty. Um, to check here. Just sorry about going back. You know, we were transferring. I'm sorry to get back off subject here, but I just noticed that we were transferring the money to the FY 2021 capital stabilization. Why wasn't it the FY 20? I don't know. I'm confused. Are we in 2021? We're in 2021. We're in 2021 right now. So why are these going back to? So it's just how you label it. Well, this is the year beginning July 1st, 2020, which or is fiscal, which is fiscal 21. For the legal expenses or for yeah. the. For legal expenses, because that's why I just noticed for it. All of them, actually. Yeah. For both years. Well, I just wanted. I was just noticing it was different. Like we were transferring money into capital stabilization for FY21, but we are transferring money oh, for legal. Oh, it's a Scribner's error. It's a Scribner's error. Oh, whatever that means. Well, we call it Scribner's error when Casey makes a mistake. Okay, we'll do that. Whatever it is, but. So, yeah. Oh, okay, good. All right, that's great. I just didn't know if well, I was I missing something. I figured out how to fix that with um, Lisa, but she didn't catch it either. All right, that sounds good. <laughs> Nobody caught it. So really, this is uh, this. These funds are really just to. Um, yes, you know, that's going to confuse people tomorrow. Thank you. Jennifer. Yep. Yep. You're I'm welcome. Sure. Fix it yet. We'll sure. Fix it. Uh, so this was just to. Uh, we have a lot more legal expenses. You know, we have we have different projects that we're working on in town. We've, done a lot of legal work over the last year. Um, in the highway department. We, yeah. we do, we, we do have, um, you know, collective bargaining that we're going to be dealing with over the next coming, you know, this, this year. So, um, unfortunately it's one of those things that we, we, you know, you have a busier town, you have a, you have more expenses and that's really what, what it boils down to. So, um, so I would make a motion to move, uh, $25,000 and, and what we don't use in that, it's not that we're going to use all of it. Just whatever we don't use in that, we'll roll back to free cash at the at the end of the year. But I would make a motion to move transfer twenty five thousand dollars from free cash to legal expenses for unforeseen costs. I'll second that motion. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Dave? Is that going to actually be enough money, Casey? Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. We honestly don't know. I would think so. It yeah. depends on how long collective bargaining goes. It depends on how long and what how in-depth litigation is, we don't know, it's a guess. Okay, I'm just... But we do know we're going to need more money. Yeah, I know we're definitely going to need more. Oh. It's just the... Uh, well, if you recall, the Finance Committee 
wasn't happy with us doing a large transfer in July. Yeah, I so understand that. Made a point to yeah. pick up that this should really go to town meeting. So we're so, taking it to town meeting with an estimated cost. Like Trevor said, if we don't use it all, it's going to roll back to tax. If not, we'll ask for a transfer at the end of the year, but hopefully, hopefully that'll be enough. Right. We're hoping yeah. we won't have to do that. Good question, though, Dave. <laughs> Well, it's just, you know, I have a concern because the planning board delayed things again, and that could open up, up to additional lawsuits, mm -hmm. and it's got to yep. be careful. I know. And because this thing could really put a fiscal hardship on the town if it's not handled correctly. Mm hmm So... I had a motion. Good second. You second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. And uh, let's see, next section is uh, section F, which is revisions to the classification plan. And uh, this this article is really just um, cleaning up our, our classification um, compensation schedule, um, compensation classification schedule, and it really is, uh, we're adding a couple of items, so um, we've restructured a little bit, so we, we had voted um, into the budget last year to have um, administration, part-time administrative help to the highway department, and uh, so that's just kind of adding that, that person to the comp schedule, and we're also... Um, we forgot to do. Yeah, which we forgot to Hello. do. Hello, bad, bad town administrator, I forgot to do that. Yeah, so we're, we're fixing that. Got it. And we're also, um, we're also reorganizing a little bit, you know, with the, how we want to, um, how we want to run the highway department and, and public, public works department. And we've had a, um, one foreman retire who's been with us many, many years. Um, we're looking to restructure that position to be more of an assistant town uh, assistant highway superintendent. Um, so while that position is not um, eligible for overtime, um, we have raised that person from a class three, uh, that position from a class three to a class five or step five, grade five. So a grade three to a grade five. Um, but we still we still think we're close in budget because. This person isn't eligible for overtime, but so we're paying them a bit more, um, and they'll be taking on a lot more duties that the foreman never never did. And we hope to help out the superintendent that way. What What happens if Casey? What happens if we vote this at town meeting, and it's being protested in negotiations, and they? That's won't. not a question we should discuss in an open meeting. That is a question for council. Well, can you ask council, please? I so, will. I will. And in fact, we've already talked about it once. Um, but I would clarify a couple of things. So we see a need for, in a similar manner as what the board did before I came on, right. to have a management level position underneath this department head. Correct. The right. highway department is, is not really a highway department anymore. It, the superintendent's job includes five disciplines that I can knock off right in my fingers, mm -hmm. but a lot of other things. So it's building maintenance, ground maintenance, roads and bridges and everything else that has to do with roads. Um, we have sewer wastewater. We have the transfer station. So those five disciplines really make up a public works department. It's just Deerfield has never organized it that way. Um, we've done all that work. The superintendent in the entire time I worked here, all oversaw those disciplines. The issue is, is we never had that middle management area where an assistant with similar um, authority as an exempt position could direct operations. We never had that. Right. Um, we had foremen, and we split those workloads in a certain way. But now we see that there's a need there to have a middle management position, what I call middle management, it's probably not the correct term, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to sort of explain it to the layperson, is a person who can be backed up for the superintendent, be that planning and organizing partner for the superintendent, so that the superintendent can focus on some of the higher level projects and issues that really need to be addressed 
and need full attention. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did with the assistant town administrator's right. position. So this is a similar reorganization to handle an increasingly amount of complicated work. There's a lot of complex things that need to get handled. On the yeah. other hand, this is, again, exempt. That means that person is not able to collect overtime because it's a management position, it's a salary position. So the compensation structure for a salary position is a little bit different than right. a salary position. And we reviewed the line item, and we think there's enough money in there to hire somebody under the new job description that was approved by the select board and approved by the personnel board throughout these discussions. Okay. So okay. we're in a position, but the bylaw requires that that be identified in a similar manner as the bylaw required us, and I missed it, to so. put in the administrative assistance for the highway slash public works. So I'm going to make a motion to approve the uh, revisions to the cla classification comp plan as presented. I'll second it. Do you have any comments? Oh, thank you. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Nuss. And there's one more. Article. One more. G. Uh, transfer um, of SCEMS rental income uh, to the SCEMS stabilization fund from previous years. So we, we had voted in annual town meeting to um, create a fund to take. Uh, money from the rent from the three towns and put it away for uh, capital stabilization for that building. And this is all that's doing. It's taking uh, money that we've, we've already brought in for the last two years and, uh, for FY uh, years of 2019 and 20. And it putting is, it into it, that fund. Um, the percentage 75% is just, um, we're going to use that for a couple of years. It's just mm -hmm. a guesstimate of yeah, we may what adjust we need in the for use, uh, regular maintenance, and then versus for a long term. Uh, I'll make a motion to transfer uh, uh, $54,000 into that fund. Um, is there any, I'll second that. Do you have any questions? Or no. Any? No. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolfram. Aye. Carolyn Nass. Okay. Um, Article 4 is the, um, just uh, an additional million dollars is needed of CPA money to um, get the project done uh, based on engineering costs. And so I would make a motion to um, approve the million dollars from CPA money. I'll second. Um, other than the sticker shop, Dave, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, have we heard anything on the park grant yet? No. We have not. Okay. We have not heard anything. And I'd like to make a, a recommendation to the select board. I think there's still going to be a lot of confusion about this, and the most important takeaway from this particular thing is this is a funding article. And so I really think it makes sense for the select board to make a statement after you move the article. Mm -hmm. Because it's important for people to understand that after town meeting, first of all, Town meeting, <coughs> annual town meeting, approves the purchase of the land and the project in its infancy stage. Correct. Okay? Um, the land was purchased in June, and we began working to figure out what we really have, what we could really do with it. But not in any in-depth way, just walking the land, you had to look and see what you had an idea of what you had for wetlands, that sort of thing. Um, so I think it's important for the select board to make a statement that we haven't begun a public information process on this. Correct. That and it's happen important in that people understand that I've already been asked to um, add this to an agenda. So right now, we have a public information session identified from 6 to 7 on the November 18th agenda. Right. So a little less than a month away. Um, I think that people are confused about the difference between what we're voting here and what what's going to move forward. This is a funding article. Correct. This we're is just language that was required um, under the park grant, which, as you know, we have an opportunity to obtain four hundred up to four hundred thousand dollars towards this project, developing recreational fields and, and other recreational activity areas for the town in this state. So 
we're not at the real progress development phases. We're in the beginning phase, but we have to clarify language as is required through that grant program. Yeah. Right. That's what we work with the grant folks, well, we work with council, I, and yeah. develop the language that we think will satisfy their needs. Can There's I, other requirements we're going to have to do, and so the other piece of this is once we once there was some idea of what the land really looked like, we realized that we needed better cost estimates because we didn't know what it was going to cost us. And so the other piece of this is we have to fully fund what we think the estimates are to do this project through, through a, however we're going to fund it um, before we qualify for the park grant. So that's that second major requirement, language, mm -hmm and fully funding this project before we find before we're allowed to actually get that four hundred thousand dollars if they award it to us. And this has to this has to be done within a certain period of time in order for us to qualify for this application. We've so got this is a funding article and I would suggest that the board mm -hmm. consider making a statement. We've got to five alleviate people's confusion. We will got five. Casey. I'm not Casey. an expert. Casey. 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 We gotta get We've got going. five minutes before we got to move on to our hearing. Um, I, I agree with all that. I think I would like to state that, um, you know, when we have this article come up at annual town meeting, again, this is a funding article to develop a park. We're not developing the park and planning out where the shrubs are going to be and where the lighting's going to be and what we're going to do on the park at annual town meeting. There's an informational session that'll happen November 14th, uh, uh, November 18th, and there'll be There'll be, I'm sure, more after that. Uh, there's a lot of planning that needs to go in to decide what will be where. This is a conceptual plan as it is right now. All we're doing is uh, securing the funding and fixing our language so we can accept a grant, yep. period. I don't want to okay. go into a large discussion of what goes where and I'm not for the project or him for the project. That's all for later. Are you for the funding for a project, period. That's it. I don't want to go into large discussion on anything okay. else. So what you need to do is you need to take a vote to um, put I mean, the meeting on hold, and I can't remember the term for it, and go to the planning board meeting, or, because this is a hearing on marijuana, which I think you want to do, correct? Yes, yes. we do. Well, we want to, yes, okay. we'll come back and finish voting. So I make a, no, I already made the motion to yes. um, um, vote in favor of um, correct. Article 4. Correct. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Um, the only thing I have is I have a concern. So only registered voters in the town of Deerfield could speak to this, right? Yes. Unless, unless, unless somebody the moderator unless asked to um, have non-registered. The moderator, the moderator runs the meeting, David. I know, but okay. it's up to town meeting to allow or not allow people to speak. Registered voters vote at Correct. town meeting on the article. And they can speak, but the town meeting has to allow anybody else to anybody speak else. who's not a registered voter. Not a registered voter, right. Trevor, did you second the motion? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Um, okay, we're, we're going to... So you want to take a vote to... Um, to Put your meeting in recession. I there's a name for it. I can't think of it. Alex might know. Um, before we, we got a couple. Uh, it's recess. Recession sounds good. Um, we'll do that. Recess. In recess. recess your meeting until after the marijuana hearing. We'll do that in a second. We're gonna do one we'll more. Sure. We're gonna do one more thing. Um, I make a motion to reduce. The on-premises pouring liquor license fees for our um, restaurants and in, uh, um, in town by 25 percent, which is about a six thousand dollar reduction. I think that's important to give to give some help to our restaurants who are who I, have been I struggling think, and. Um, well, at least. I mean, we still need revenue coming in to keep the town running, but but you know. I think this would help uh, go a long ways to help them with their yeah. their revenue issues as well and their expenses. So, um, you know, I've noticed other towns are doing this as well, and I think it's a, I think it's a, a good gesture, and I think it helps helps our community in the long run. Mm -hmm. 
let, let our businesses so get through this. So that was by 25%? Yes. 25%. Uh, yeah. By 25%. Did you second that? I'll second that motion. On-premise pouring right. Yep. On-premise pouring. Yes. On-premise pouring only. Yep. On-premise pouring only, right. And I um, second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfen. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, so we're going to stop and take a recess. We'll vote to take a recess. I make a motion to recess um, to finish our agenda after the planning board meeting. I'll um, second. Um, review of the marijuana bill. I'll second that motion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfen. I Carolyn So okay. we'll recess at 7 and come back to public. Well, yeah, we'll come back and finish our agenda. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Okay. Hopefully soon. Okay. <laughs> <Hopefully soon. laughs> Ready? We're back on. What are you talking about, Alex? Okay. <laughs> I'll, make a motion. I'll make a motion to um, commence in our meeting. <laughs> yes, uh, second that motion. We're back on. No, 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 Open no, 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 no. Oh, you got to record? All right, hit no, record. Oh, no, hold on. Okay. This meeting is being recorded. All right, try again. Okay. okay. I make a motion to reopen our meeting. Second that motion. Great. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. We okay. are opening up again at 9.41 p.m. Oh, man. That's okay. p.m., everybody. P.m. I know. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a request for assistance to purchase needles for Frontier EDS by Whaley and Sunderland Cares Act. Casey, you want to just say two seconds about that? Two seconds. Okay. We, I sent an email off to Brian Domina and Jeff Kravitz over in Whaley and Sunderland respectfully, respectively, sorry, and they agreed that um, they would be willing to pursue that through their Cares Act funding under the condition that we invoice them. Did I nail it? Yes. We just, and I think that's how it was. Yes, we just At wanted... Point, I'm tired. I know. Yeah. We just wanted $2,500 from each town yeah. under their CARES Act so we could buy additional needles for right. COVID-19 distribution. Sounds the town good. of Deerfield has already ordered 5,600 right. that are on their way in that came, we ordered in July. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, um, next item on the agenda is <coughs> transfer from reserve fund for purchase of trees around the municipal offices in the police department. But we don't really have a dollar amount that we're asking for, right? We don't really have a dollar amount. I, respectfully, I think we need a little more information. Yeah, let's just get wait let's some put so that on to November Let me 4th. just speak a second on that real okay. quick, though. Is the talk is about taking out some trees that are going to be in the way of repaving the parking lot at some point and that are damaging the building. The building, yes. The, the I kind of feel like um, I'd like to split the baby a little bit there and, and skirt the trees um, and get them cleaned up and off the building some. There's some big limbs that could come down. We could, we could maybe save some of them. I just, I know the idea is to plant some trees so that we can get some developed. You know that are growing we really need i would like to i would request some money for an arborist to come in walk the property with us think about our larger plan with these three properties and figure out what we want to do but in the meantime i do think it's important to skirt some of the trees i know some are damaging the building you know we're looking at fixing some walls there are getting rotted the leaves are clogging up gutters and stuff so i think it's important to do that stuff but i'm not so sure we need to wholesale Hack them down right at the moment. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Just let's take care of what we have. Clean it up a little bit, and then start maybe look to plant some. Okay. And that, but I think get an arborist to look I, around. I think with we us need an great. arborist to give us some advice. Okay. So we'll, let's hold off on the transfer request to um, because we, I think it, it needs to include a, a true arborist. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't tran have a transfer request. We don't know. You know, is right. it a dollar? Yeah. Is it a thousand? Right. Or? No. We, yeah, Let's we get that right. figured. We need, we need yep. an idea. Yeah. Right. Um, the next thing is sewer rates, which I will have some information, I think, uh, by Friday, but certainly by our next meeting, we'll be able to set rates. So I okay. should have some information coming on that very, very soon. The um, next item on the agenda is uh, tick surveillance. Uh, Dr. Love from the University of Massachusetts. Um, he's an expert um, in diseases. Uh, you know, transmitted bug diseases. And um, he's doing a program for uh, 
he wants to actually, instead of going out and, and surveilling the ticks mm -hmm. and sampling, you know, what's disease and what's not, he actually wants to sample people. So he's huh. looking for um, persons that are outdoorsy or enjoy the outdoors that are exposed to ticks on a regular basis and um, that he want, wants to observe you know, your, what you're doing, when you're doing it, huh. and your exposure level, and, and also monitor what's happening. That's so, interesting. Yeah, it's a okay. little bit different aspect of um, tick surveillance. Yep. So, so he's looking um, for volunteers? Yes, so he's right. looking for volunteers. So anybody that's really active or interested in being active or has had past history with ticks, um, he's interested in trying talking to talking with you. Talking with you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next item on the agenda is Contract Proterra Design Group. What, what is that again? This is um, uh, the group that uh, was previously funded under the CPA money for the park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. It's this to do the design work. Yeah. It's to do the oh, actual the... design work so okay. we have more of a handle on what yep. is actually happening with yeah. our design. And the reason why we want to sign the contract is we want them on board so when we have our informational nights, they yeah. can um, yeah. be here with us to Answer talk about questions. you know what you're potentially doing. Okay. So um, I'd like to make a motion um, to award the contract with them for the fees um, are six, not to exceed $61,945. Is that right, Casey? Is, yeah. that what, is that what the bid is? Okay. Okay. Uh, so I, I make that motion. This is an engineering contract, so right. it, there's an exclusion in Chapter 30B. Correct. For these services. Yep. I'll second that. Dave seconds. Okay. Is there any more discussion on this? Nope. Um, I just want people to know that we are intending to have a session on the park November 18th mm -hmm. um, from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, and we will be yeah. working on this. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfen. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. And uh, uh, is, it, is it a motion just to have the chair sign? Um, or is it all three of us need to sign? Oh, no, it is a motion to have yes. just a chair sign. Just the chair <laughs> sign. So, yeah, so I've been that motion to have to approve the chair to, to sign. I'll second it. Okay. All right. Let me just find both of these so Casey is, we have them on board. If anyone is still awake, please join us tomorrow for an exciting special town meeting yeah. <laughs> at Frontier at 5 o'clock. Get there early. Get a real comfy chair. And uh, I don't think you'll have to bundle up. Bring a real comfy chair. Bring a 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 chair. Yes, and, and maybe a jacket, but it's going to be 70, so. Um, Casey, do you have any updates? I don't know, do we have any mail? Uh, her update is she's ready um, for bed. Yeah. <laughs> do you have your slippers on yet? <laughs> yes, there were a couple items well, in the mail. Please, that's my update, no. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm right now, I'm just tweaking motions on the handout for special town meetings. So they were um, two pieces. We've been, we've been working to assist with many of the things that you guys have worked on in the last two weeks. The okay. special town meeting warrant and the motions to work with finance committee on that. We've been working with some of the other groups like Capital Improvement Planning Committee to iron out a couple issues we had there. Um, it's very busy in the town hall simply because there's a lot of early voters. So we are trying to maintain our distance and um, provide that access for folks without getting in their way. And there's just a thousand other things that I could write down if I had time to write these. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I know. Everyone's busy. stretched out. Um, is there any uh, public comment? Chris uh, Harris, are you still on? Or do you want to say anything? I'm still so on. I don't know if I'm using you. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're there. We can hear you. you. Thank you for your yeah. comment. Thank you no, for... I, I well, thank you for your earlier comment. I appreciate it. I want you to know I appreciate that. And we hope to see you tomorrow night? Yes, please come tomorrow night. 
Dave, do you have anything or anybody have any uh, uh, unanticipated items? Nope, I don't have any. Uh, okay. Our next meeting is April. I mean, April. April. Okay. I yeah, April. See ya. I'm out. Wow, that year went fast. I'm out. <laughs> Talk about no, November. <laughs> I'm, I'm a thinking spring down meeting. November 4th um, and the 18th, December 2nd, 16th, and 30th. And we have special town meeting tomorrow night. So 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. It's Front 5 o'clock, people, so please pay Come attention. early. Come early. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, John. Have a very Thank nice evening. I really appreciate everybody participating tonight.